Bonjour, hello. Shall we get seated and start? On s'assied gentiment, comme ça on est tous prêts. Et je vais passer la parole à... I will pass on to Karine Bernot, president of Nantes University, for the welcome. Mr. Executive Director of Open Education Global, Mr. Co-Chair, dear Colin, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to express a very warm welcome to our beautiful city of Nantes for the 2022 edition of the International Reference Congress on Open Education. It is our pleasure to meet face to face, finally, as we just said, and to welcome you who have come from all over the world. I am very pleased in my capacity as co-chair to open this event, which is taking place for the first time in France and more widely in a French-speaking country. Let me take this opportunity to thank the executive directors of Open Education Global, Mr. Paul Stacey and Mr. Igor Lesko, as well as the members of the Open Education Consortium for selecting our candidacy. We should have held this conference last year here, but the health crisis decided otherwise and forced us to adapt by proposing a two-stage organization, a congress in 2021 with online lectures and this 2022 face-to-face -face edition that focuses mainly on the implementation on the recommendation adopted in 2019 by UNESCO on open educational resources. I would also like to thank the teams at Nantes University who has been hard at work for the past two years on the organization of these two editions, masterfully led by the other co-chair of this Congress, Colin de Laiguera, author of the UNESCO Chair in Open Educational Resources and Artificial Intelligence. And Since I'm mentioning the UNESCO chair, it's also worth noting that this edition is placed under the eminent patronage of UNESCO. And I would also like to greet the other partners of this Congress, Pays de la Loire Région, Nantes Métropole, and the National Center for Scientific Research, CNRS. Allow me, as well, to express my pleasure at seeing many colleagues from Nantes University in this room, a proof of the enthusiasm generated by the team of open education within our institution. In fact, this subject is at the heart of our policies for Nantes University. We support open educational resources by joining the Open Education Consortium in 2012, and more recently, We expand the portfolio of the Vice President of Nantes University in charge of academic training, Arnaud Gevel, to open education. Him and I will be speaking during the keynote three session this Wednesday to explain why and how Nantes University is an open university. Without disclosing too much about what we are going to say, I would like to briefly mention the major challenge that open education represents for our institution. It is one of the pillars of the open approach to which Nantes University is committed in order to spread knowledge as widely as possible. We are indeed convinced that in order to accomplish our mission, to ensure social progress, to create new knowledge, to accelerate scientific discoveries and to solve the complex problems raised by the crisis that we are going through, we must ensure the dissemination of knowledge beyond our walls and even beyond the university environment, regardless of borders. We are therefore developing a global policy in favor of open education, but also open science, open innovation, and even open government. I would like to insist on the subject of sharing knowledge beyond the walls of the university, because there are many issues at stake. These issues are democratic. Access to education, to knowledge, is the first step towards citizenship. To make knowledge accessible to the greatest number of people is to allow individual emancipation for the benefit of the general interest. It is to allow each person not to be subjected 
to public opinion and to form his own opinion. The challenges are also cultural. Ideas, concepts, the way we teach or research, or do research, reflects our culture. In this area, as in others, diversity is essential. And it is therefore important that as many countries as possible engage in this logic of sharing in order to allow intercultural dialogues. Finally, the stakes are linguistic. To give greater visibility at the international level to works published in French language and act in favor of francophonie. This multidimensional approach to knowledge sharing should facilitate dialogue between disciplines and promote the interdisciplinarity that is essential for the cross-fertilization of knowledge, the emergence of new ideas and the study of the complex issue we face. In this logic, knowledge is not a competitive market, but an object of disinterested sharing. It's a common good. This is why open access to knowledge is written into the statutes of Nantes University and is part of its DNA. So, as you can see, holding such a conference in Nantes, bringing together specialists in open education from all continents, represents a real opportunity for our community. Meeting our counterparts, comparing practices, and sharing experiences is a wonderful occasion for us during these three days. To conclude, I wish a lot of success to this conference, which will allow us to discuss, collaborate, innovate, and celebrate the openness of education together. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to add my welcome as well. So welcome to Nantes. Um, I'm Paul Stacy, the Executive Director of Open Education Global, and it's really my thrill to welcome you all here after such a hiatus of several years of not being able to see each other in person. Um, uh, putting on a conference like this is a major undertaking, and I wanted to acknowledge and thank our hosts here, Nantes University, who also helped us host the online conference last year. Um, we've been delighted to work with them, and it's been a real, a real pleasure all the way along. Uh, we do have for this conference the patronage of UNESCO, and the conference is in part focused on the UNESCO OER recommendation. We thank them for that. And we do have a number of sponsors that I always uh, like to acknowledge right at the front. So here are the sponsors for this year's conference. Um, and they are um, almost all here, although some of them uh, were unable to make it for various reasons. So thank you, sponsors, for uh, supporting us in hosting this global event. Um, to do a conference like this is like really a community effort. And there are, our conference chairs are here on the stage, Karine and Colin. Um, it's a big initiative to uh, take on the uh, uh, responsibility of hosting the conference, and I wanted to acknowledge that as well as the program chairs, uh, Wayne Holmes is here with us and he, he was uh, working with Davor Orlik who as a co-chair on this for the actual program that you have in, in front of you over the next three days. And then behind the scenes, uh, Melanie and Solène have been doing a lot of legwork and logistics work to support not only this event and the logistics around it, but also the social activities that will take place over the next couple of nights. So thank you, Melanie and Solène. Um, and then my OE Global team. So um, Igor Lesko leads the creation and production process of the OE Global Conference, and it's a massive effort. Thank you, Igor. And the rest of the team also contributes enormously to it. And all of the graphics that you see, the signage, the stickers, and the posters are designed by our creative director, Mario Badilla, who uh, I'm really happy is here. And Jean Gondal for technology, Isla for communications, Rachel did all the finance side, and Liz Yada, um, and Alan Levine, who's hosting, he's not here with us, but he's actually hosting the virtual online component of this conference. Uh, we, we are really thankful him, for him and doing all of that work. And then there's a lot of you who, who, many of you were peer reviewers for the many proposals that we received, and I just want to acknowledge you because behind the scenes, there are always a lot of people involved in putting on a big event like this. 
Um, we're also delighted this year for the first time since I've been here to have students who are studying hotel and catering and their teacher here who are volunteering, helping with everything from the coat check to the registration desk and other um, hospitality parts of the conference, so thanks to them. Um, I mentioned that the program is focused on the UNESCO OER recommendation. We have 99 uh, different sessions with 95 speakers. There's over 270 people registered for this conference. The conference program is broken up into keynotes, plenaries, thematics, and learning labs. And uh, all of those have session chairs. So thank you if you're chairing a session. Thank you so much for keeping things on track, doing the intros and uh, managing the time. And then in addition this year, we have a number of special organizational workshops that are taking place throughout the three days. And I, I think some of you are here for those and I hope they also go equally well. Uh, one of the things that's unusual about last year's program and this year's program is that we are focused on making this an international multilingual conference, which is uh, very unusual. So we do support, uh, we did support a call for proposals in different languages, and so we have sessions in Arabic, English, French, and Spanish. And uh, we have a whole uh, series of language chairs who will be speaking in a session later on today. And then we have three wonderful keynotes. Uh, today's keynote will feature Cyan Proctor. Thank you, Cyan, in advance, and we'll, we'll get to you in a moment. Um, and then tomorrow we'll have Andrea Rose from Ecuador, and then we'll have, on the last day, Karine. Um, and so I think these three keynotes are really exceptional, and I will now turn it over to Colin to say a few more words about the program. Thank you, Paul. So yes, I'm Colin Laguerre, and I'm from Nantes University, and I'm a co-conference chair for this conference. So uh, I wanted to also say a few things about, uh, to welcome you and to say a few things about the program. So I'm building up time so you can see all the names of the people that I did want to add without being able to read the lists and have photographs of them all. But it has been a huge effort of a lot of people, and uh, I think this is the moment to say thank you to all these people for helping. So, how are we doing this like this? So, this was the key message that I wanted to pass, is that when uh, we were all stuck at home, we all remember this, uh, we were arguing that we were trying to get back to have a, a, the, a conference with everybody present. But some people said, we can't go back to normal, right? This is not going back to normal. We have to do things differently. And so I think we, we did a huge effort in that line of thinking, what can we do differently, learning some lessons from what has happened over the past few years? And that's where we introduced this idea of multilingualism. There's been another idea, which was that we want to help people from the global south to come. So in a joint effort, we actually found grants to be able to help people from uh, other countries to, to be able to make it to not. Then we thought, well, can we sort of try and share with the rest of the world? And this is why we've got uh, this room and the room at the other end called La Salle de Son, which are going to be streamed during the three days. And so this is going to be visible or anywhere in the world. And it's going to also be made accessible later. So on the different platforms, people will be able to, uh, to uh, view these things. So it has got some consequences I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and then the fourth thing is the interaction with the outside. So we didn't want to have a session with a hybrid session with people sitting in the room watching a screen. So everybody's in the room giving the talk, save I think one exception. But people from the outside can actually be listening to what's happening. And through a different number of features, they can actually participate and discuss with you in different areas we've organized for that. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about multilingualism and, uh, and also about the streaming. But before that, I wanted to hand over uh, to Wayne. Perhaps so the Wayne tells us a few words about the actual process of the, the reviewing and um, how the program was built. Wayne, either over here or, yeah, okay. Um, thanks, Colin. Um, th I just wanted to um, point out a few things. Um, firstly, um, I signed up to be a program chair in this conference and was told it was going to be seven months preparation and here we are 14 months later and we're still going strong, so I wanted to thank everybody, the team, for that. Um, so as 
Paul has already mentioned, he's taken some of my fund already. We had 108 proposals um, from 123 people. Um, and each of those proposals was reviewed by at least two reviewers, so the number that Paul mentioned earlier. And so again, I want to add my thanks to all the reviewers um, who helped in that process. Without them, you know, we wouldn't be um, doing this today. Um, we accepted 97 uh, proposals in the end, which works out to a 90% acceptance rate, which is pretty good. Now, I don't think that's because we were very lax in choosing which ones we would accept, because the quality of the submissions was really high. So thank you to all of you um, for that. Um, as Paul also mentioned, 99 sessions, 106 speakers, four languages, and um, the, uh, the multilingualism that um, um, Colin and everybody's mentioned so far. I also wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been working hard on that, because it's fundamentally important been an incredible challenge, but hopefully we are uh, moving forward and it's, you know, a stepping stone for next year. Um, final person I wanted to thank was um, Dava Orlik, who is my program co-chair. Um, unfortunately, he's not here, thanks to the British um, airplane company EasyJet. Um, he actually went to, he went to Paris yesterday rather than Nantes, and he's currently on a train, hopes to be here within an hour. Okay, so thank you, everybody, and I hope you have a fantastic uh, conference. Thank you very much. Okay, so a word about multilingualism. So, um, why multilingualism? So, because we're in France, and we've heard the word francophonie pronounced earlier, but also because it's not just a, uh, an issue for the French, it's an issue for many, many languages. So, uh, to keep it brief, if openness is about breaking barriers, one of the key barriers we have is language. And uh, it matters. In some topics, it matters less. If you're doing mathematics or if you're doing computer science, usually there's a common ground on which everybody is able to speak some sort of a common language. But as soon as we're talking about education or about ideas, it makes the conversation much more difficult for somebody who's not fluent in the language of the conference. So uh, we thought about this, and in um, 2021, since it was an online conference, well, we used webinars to be able to start ideas. And, and it took on. I mean, people loved it. People were happy with it. Um, we discovered things. We do, made really astonishing discoveries of how the same topic could be talked about in very different ways if it was um, spoken about in French, in Spanish, or in English, for example. So we thought, you know, this is something we've got to continue building on. So we have. So this time we try to go for only four languages. So A, because it's technically difficult, but also because there are six official languages for United Nations and so for UNESCO. And the two others we did not have any submissions for, so uh, we were left with Arabic, um, with Spanish, with French, and with English. So then once we got all these um, submissions, which were written in these different languages, we assigned them, thanks uh, to the job done by Wayne and, and, and Davor, to reviewers of those languages. So they were reviewed in those languages. And then we had this program to put up with uh, some titles in Arabic and trying to get them into the program and fit in. is isn't quite easy, but if I end up by saying, oh, am I sure that this is what, what, where the title is? You know? so, so you actually did, a, we managed to put, uh, put all this together. Uh, and then we have the choice of sort of either just mixing everything up and letting people get on with it, or trying to say, can we do things modestly? And what we tried to do was be modest, and out of five rooms, because there are five rooms for the conference, four of them are what we will call monolingual. So they're not English, right? They are monolingual. Some rooms at one moment will be for a whole session in English or in French or in Spanish. And then some rooms are going to be multilingual. Actually, all the multilingualism is going to be in this room. So in the same session, when you'll be sitting here, you will be hearing it in uh, uh, one talk in French, and perhaps the next one in English, and perhaps the next one in Arabic. So what happens then? We can't go for automatic translation, because it's, you know, with translators, it costs a lot of money, so we couldn't do that. But since some of us work in an AI lab, well, with the help of our students who are sitting down at the back there, uh, we developed this thing over here. So this thing over here is an app that is in this moment showing you clouds of words. So at the beginning, it took a while to, to, to cold start because it needs to have some data. You know, this is how things happen with AI. You need some data. So little by little, it'll start sort of 
understanding, let's say, what is happening, and we will start having better and better clouds of words. So you can get clouds of words, or you can get the actual sentences. We're not passing the sentences in this room. So of course, you can sit here and see what's happening, but you can also download, not the link, to the uh, web page, which is just a web page. And if you have tried, on that web page, you can actually play yourself and choose in what language you want the cloud of words or have the automatic translation of what's happening. So you can choose and have it on your app at the same time. So I don't have the QR code here. It's on the doors as you come in, right? You can get the, the QR code and then you can follow the debates in you know, your favorite language. This is all very experimental, right? This may be a disaster. And we may be laughing at saying, oh, look, this is, uh, I saw the word pepper appear during uh, Karine's talk. So clearly it wasn't working at that moment. So there are things like that that are going to happen. But our belief is that the future goes in that direction. But the future is to be written. It's, this may not be the, the right answer. This only may be part of the answer. But we do believe that multilingualism is going to be the answer somewhere. Okay, so um, that's about uh, it for the multilingualism. Uh, no, not quite it. I did want to mention the names of the, the students who are over there, Julien, Mamadou, and Maxime. They did the hard work, and they were helped by Andrian uh, Victor, who uh, helped them on this task, and uh, we got some funding, uh, a little bit of funding, and uh, this is how we did the job. Okay, so the full program, as we said, you found it's on pre-talks. Uh, so just notice it, there's five rooms in parallel, not all the time five rooms, there's one or two moments where there's only four rooms, so you can look and move around from one room to another. Uh, in this room, uh, in these rooms, what we can say is that uh, the, all the sessions are 90 minutes long, long, and there can be some errors in the program. If you manage to see an error with your name, just go to a registration desk and let us know. Errors can be due to many factors, and errors can be as simple as that your co-authors have been forgotten somewhere in the process. So, you know, we apologize already, but just let us know and we will rectify immediately. Um, that's what I want to say about the program itself. So the second issue is the one of, not issue, the second thing is streaming. So we're not going to stream five rooms, we're going to stream two rooms, this one and the room at the other end, the Salle 200, so 450 means there's room for 450, we're not quite 450, or 200. So they're being live streams, and since they're being live streams, we do have a little bit of issues with uh, images and with videos that you may include in your talks. So uh, a reminder for the session chairs in this room and that room, there is a consent form which is as simple as possible that needs to be signed, so please sign it. And uh, also, member for the people who are actually uh, using this, but we're all in the OER world, so we do know how it happens. So make sure you do have uh, material for which you have the, let's say, the, the, the rights to use it, typically Creative Commons material or other is good. And if not, you just tell us and we find a way of just skipping out that part when we're actually um, keeping the videos afterwards. Um, okay, so the, we said another one of the features was this virtual uh, program. So in parallel with this, Alan, who we saw the picture of uh, earlier, he's running this uh, virtual program. And so there's a number of things happening. So it's um, more or less, um, let's say I'm hoping the people in the room stay in the room, but since we are being streamed, people elsewhere may have the choice of remaining in one of these two rooms or to go and look at what's happening uh, in, in other places. So um, things like uh, the interaction zone have been, uh, have been um, uh, invented, and you will all be asked at some point, you know, saying, do you want to speak with somebody who's at the other end of the world? So if we're able to put up things like that, this can be an alternative. Okay, as far as the program go, as goes, I hope I've said everything I had to say. Let's talk about the social program. So social program starts today. So it's supposed to start at um, 5.30. So at the end of the last session, we have got a walking tour. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it is raining. Right. Uh, we've got a walking tour leaving from uh, here and going to uh, uh, one, uh, uh, 1.6 miles, 2.6 kilometers away with three guides who are going to tell us about the history of Nantes and some of the landmarks to get to this place and it'll take a nice hour, hour and a bit and we, we get there. 
uh, those who don't want the, the, the tour because it's raining or because they want to go to the hotel. I mean, if it is raining, we will find an alternative. We're going to have to think this out. The next rendezvous is at 7 o'clock at a place called Les Salons Mauduit at the address which is there, and I'm supposing the address is in the program somewhere, and you've all got it. And if not, we'll have to write it down in different places. So this is a great hall. You can see here, I think this is, uh, this is Igor, I, I would suggest, taking a picture of it. So this is a great hall in which we are, well, what we've done is try to find uh, the local producers of different things that are produced in the area. And uh, so you will be able to uh, sample um, local food, local liquids. Probably not allowed to say the word wine when, I, when, when, I, when in streaming. And, uh, and, uh, and also we'll have a jazz band and uh, I hope it'll be fun, right? And it is open to everybody or nearly everybody. I think you've just got to have this little, 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 one of these little uh, stickers on your, on your badge and that's the, the, the thing saying, okay, you're on the, first, um, the list. And if you're not on the list, well, again, go to registration and ask, why am I not on the list? Okay, um, so etiquette for this, well, no etiquette at all. Dress as you like, just wear this name tag, or not just because we recognize the sticker, because it's nice to actually speak with people you don't know, so it's, it makes it easy for people to understand who's who and be in a, in a good mood, bonne humeur for the event. Okay, uh, we also have a social program event tomorrow. So I was told by uh, Melanie, you've heard about Melanie earlier, and Solène, uh, the two of them saying, oh, this is misleading, right? You're giving the impression that everybody gets a ride on the elephant. So no, you don't get a ride on the elephant. But it is that part of Nantes. So the elephant is a, a feature of Nantes. Uh, so we'll be around that part of Nantes for those who want to come. And we've got a sort of uh, a place called Cagnacitapas with an address there to go and, um, go and see things. So that's tomorrow evening, and there there will be time to go to the hotel and refresh before going there. Okay, I think I've nearly finished, so all I can say is thank you. Merci. Gracias. Anything I've forgotten? Have we forgotten anything? If there are questions, we do have a bit of time to answer questions before the keynote. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone have questions? About the program or the socials or, or, or the weather. Language. What's that? Oh, That's not a question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay, well, good. Um, well, why don't we okay. invite Lisa yes. and Cyan up for the first keynote, please? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.